I mean, you can see about 20 people on this inflatable boat just out to the side of us. You can see that there is a French rescue boat which is following uh, at a sort of short distance away, just making sure, escorting this inflatable boat full of people to British waters. Dawn breaks in Dover, where Europe's busiest ferry port and the fastest crossing between Britain and France is unusually quiet. But in the English Channel, it's a different story. Recently, good weather has seen more migrants attempt to make this dangerous crossing in small boats than at any other time in 2023. Over 20,000 have already made this journey this year. And with more good weather forecast, that number's expected to grow. But what actually goes on in this short but significant stretch of sea between Dover and Calais? Talk TV correspondent Victoria Inez spent one whole day in these choppy waters to find out. At the moment, we're about a mile off of the coast of Dover. You can see the cliffs there behind me. It's very uh, rocky, slightly windy conditions as we head out into the channel. Of course, now, even though we are in autumn, uh, we have seen extortionately high temperatures, uh, highs of 30 degrees across the UK. And of course, that is going to mean a surge in the number of small boats that are coming across the channel. Border Force are on alert to watch out for an increase in the number of people. So far we know from GPS systems on board this boat that there is at least one escort vessel around about 17 miles from here uh, which indicates that it has probably uh, just left uh, the coast of France and is likely to be escorting a boat this way. Now obviously for Rishi Sunak having just come back from that summer break this situation is going to be increasingly frustrating as he tries to get a handle on the situation. He says that there is a decrease in the number of people crossing, of small boats coming over. And he said uh, that that wasn't down to just uh, better, uh, poorer, sorry, weather conditions over the summer, but that it is down to his policies. But other experts say that is not the case. And as the increase, the improvement in the weather over the last few days has shown uh, and will likely show those numbers of people are still coming over. We don't have figures yet, but people around uh, Dover who have been watching the situation have said that they did see a number of small boats. We're going to head out into the channel uh, and see uh, what the situation is. So with the conditions making it easy, the team headed out further into the English Channel in search of those escort boats and Britain's sea border with France. Skipper Mick could easily track other boats down using his GPS. He says in good weather, he sees migrant boats most days. It just shows how desperate they are, doesn't it? You know, to get on to where they want to go. It's probably the easiest part of their journey. If It's, it's all organised, a lot of it, isn't it? So, you know, you've got to stop, it, stop them before they leave. It's, once they've left, then it's too late. They have to be stopped before they leave. You know, once they're on the, on the sea, then all you can do is escort them, which is what the French are doing, you know. So you just don't know who might be on board. They might all be masquerading as um, immigrants, but there might be a terrorist amongst them, see? So if they pick them all up, then they can scrutinise them all then, can't they? And it wasn't too long until we came into contact with one of the French vessels we were looking for. And alongside this giant ship, another smaller craft was in tow. A small dinghy of migrants attempting to make the dangerous channel crossing. Well, we're about a couple of miles away from British waters. You can see probably just an orange speck in the distance, which is an inflatable dinghy with several people on board. There are probably around about 10 to 15 people on board that we can tell, although it's very difficult, as you can see in the distance, to tell uh, how many people exactly are on board. It's being escor escorted by a French boat, a huge uh, deep sea rescue vessel, which you can see see behind it which will escort it all the way through French waters until it reaches British waters when it will be picked up by border force vessels. We're going to try and get slightly closer. As you can see it's a very calm day today. The weather uh, is very warm which means that we are likely to see a surge in the number of people making the journey. On the GPS we can see at least one other escort French rescue boat which means that there is likely at least one more inflatable 
visible boat full of people. Uh, we're going to try and move slightly closer uh, to see if we can see exactly how many people are on board. Despite Britain and France signing a £480 million deal earlier this year to help put an end to channel crossings, what our team saw was a French ship safely shepherding people to British waters and into the responsibility of UK border force. I mean, you can see about 20 people on this inflatable boat just out to the side of us. You can see the orange of their life jackets. They're all sitting very calmly because there's obviously no space on these boats for them to do anything else. If they move, then water could come into the boat. At the moment, it's looking fairly stable, but because it's fairly choppy, the water out here today, you can still see that there are waves coming up against the side of the boat. Behind the inflatable boat, you can see that there is a French rescue boat, which is following uh, at a sort of short distance away, just making sure, escorting this inflatable boat full of people to British waters. We're about two miles, just under two miles away from British waters, where border force ships should come. Uh, the Coast Guard will likely be watching this inflatable vessel. It will likely have drones in the area monitoring where it's at. We can see from inside the boat's cabin that there aren't any border force ships in the area at the moment because they are pursuing a different vessel, a different inflatable vessel full of more people making their way over. And so when they reach British waters, if there isn't a border force ship available, this French ship behind will leave this dinghy full of people and they will be left to make their own way towards the UK coastline. Once into British waters, it's still around a 10 mile journey to dry land. And on a rough day, it's easy to see how boats like this would get into danger. But as our boat moved closer and closer back towards Dover, we saw firsthand the trade we'd heard so much about. Well, look, you can see at the moment here, we've got both the French boat, the rescue ship, which has been following the dinghy in the middle there with 20 to 30 people on board for several hours now. And to the other side, you can see the British Border Force boat who has now arrived to pick those people up. Uh, another boat will come by following that to pick the dinghy up and escort them back to the UK shoreline. Now, they've been on this boat now for several hours, having left uh, early this morning, as you can see, the conditions out here while still a little bit choppy in the sea uh, are quite warm outside but that boat could have taken on a fair amount of water meaning that those people on board in their life jackets as you can see could well be very cold. Now that border force boat getting increasingly closer to that dinghy ready to pick those people up, the French vessel ready to leave them to hand over uh, and they will head back towards the UK shoreline. And sure enough as UK border force got close to the dinghy, people clambered aboard to safety as the French patrol boat began its own journey home. But those people on board that boat have now successfully been picked up by the British border force boat, which you can see behind me. You could see on board the orange life jackets being taken off by the people as they climbed up onto the deck. It's been several hours that they have been in the dinghy out here in the middle of the channel. We are now, of course, in British waters, which means that this boat will now escort them back towards the UK. Now, just shortly beforehand over the other side, the French rescue boat, which is now leaving back to go to board towards uh, uh, French waters uh, and to be on the lookout of course for any other boats. We know in the area there was at least one other rescue of people on another inflatable earlier today and with the weather as it is it's likely there could be several more. UK officials are only meant to pick up migrants once in UK waters but this arrangement makes that a simple job and soon another UK boat arrived to collect the dinghy once the passengers were safely out of the water. Now this is just one small boat that our team saw, but we know from using the ship's GPS, there were at least four more out in the channel for several hours while we were there. And as we arrived back into Dover, how many others were doing the same? Rishi Sunak has pledged to stop the boats, but with warm weather set to continue, channel crossings could still provide a big headache for the UK government.